All right, good afternoon. Everybody hear me okay? Awesome. Well, welcome to uh, reInvent. How many of you have attended sessions before this? And how many of you are ready for the week that lies ahead? Uh, you're a brave bunch, brave bunch. Now, I realize I'm the only thing that stands between you and your first evening of beer and levity here at Las Vegas, so uh, hopefully I'm not too dry and uh, we'll get you on, on your way. Um, but really, thank you for coming. Um, you, our partners, are really what, uh, are on the front lines with our customers, helping them day in and day out. We really rely on you to, uh, to, to hand hold them, really, in a lot of scenarios that I'm going to be talking through today, and uh, hopefully I've got some information that you might find valuable. Let me ask some questions first, really quickly, um, and I apologize, I'm going to wander a bit. Um, now, this year's a little bit different. Usually these, these podiums are a little bit taller, so it's kind of hard to see me over these. So it's, it's like this bobbing head usually, but uh, this, this year actually looks a little bit, little bit better. But how many of you are familiar with SAP? Okay, I would expect that. How many of you are actual SAP partners? Not AWS partners, but SAP partners. All right, SAP partners. All right, and how many of you are AWS partners and SAP partners? All right, so about the same, about the same. All right. So um, I won't spend a lot of time on this, but I think it's no secret that SAP has been leading the ERP market for uh, a couple decades now. Uh, it's estimated that they currently own about 24% of the global market share for ERP, doubling uh, Oracle's, um, Oracle's market share, or its number two position. Um, what we found um, through research is in general, once a, a customer selects an ERP vendor, uh, they tend to stay with them, right? And so for you partners, um, it's interesting, and this is, new, this is new data for me as well as we were doing the research here. 80% of SAP customers are now in the SMB space, right? In the, in the, in the small mid-market space. So there's, there's a lot of growth, um, and it's especially in this space here. Um, a full 80% of the business supports these mid-sized mid, mid companies. Um, so SAP continues to be very relevant for how the world, uh, to the world and how customers run mission-critical environments. Um, how many of you are familiar with all the, the subtle nuances between uh, SAP systems and, and what customers are deploying today? So there's your classic business solutions, what SAP has traditionally called business suite, so your, your ECC systems, ERP, CRM, SRM. Uh, there's these SMB solutions like I was talking about, business one, uh, older versions called all-in-one. Um, SAP has their new in-memory database, uh, new as of um, you know, four to five years now. Um, but now SAP is touting these new solutions like S4 HANA and uh, BW for HANA, right? Again, HANA's in the name, they're backed by, by HANA and not necessarily traditional other databases like DB2, Oracle, SQL Server, and whatnot. SAP believes that customers want and will actually move to the cloud, right? They're very public about this. They also have a new strategy for innovation. Which, is I, which I indicated is in new developments like S4 and BW, BW4, excuse me, only run on HANA. And so what this means is it requires customers to move from their existing implementations and the assets that they've developed over the years and implemented to this new platform and their new in-memory database. Now, really key here is the support for the existing systems, these classic business suite systems, is ending in 2025. So customers have to find a way to actually migrate from what they have today to these new code lines or choose to do something alt altogether different. Of course, SAP would like all their customers to move to HANA as soon as possible. The fact is that uh, many, of their many of the SAP customers today, uh, the majority of them run uh, still systems that are backed by Oracle databases. And these databases, database licenses are typically resold through SAP. Um, now, previously set to expire, this whole reseller agreement uh, set to expire uh, with Oracle uh, was, was set to expire at the end of this year. It's been extended to 2025. But as you can see, according to the, the cost of these licenses, these Oracle licenses, has, uh, has more than doubled over the last three years. So again, many customers are looking for exit strategies um, for some of the database choices they made over the years as well as how do I take advantage of these new innovations that SAP is bringing? And when do I make that transition? I know I have to do something before 2025. Um, when do I make this journey? And there's cost pressure. Customers are very, very risk averse, as you can imagine, about moving ERP systems. They're not, 
They're not simple systems. Many of these systems have actually been built up over decades. These things tend to proliferate. There's lots of different landscapes. Um, in a lot of cases, it's taken decades to stabilize these things. Um, there's also new innovations and new strategies that are uh, bringing brought to light in customer implementations, strategies around big data, IoT, all the buzzwords you hear today. And customers are trying to figure out how they actually combine, how do I take what I have from an old world legacy perspective and combine it and integrate it into what I'm doing new. And so the halo effect, right? What we see is customers that actually move their ERP systems into the AWS platform and want to combine it with some of the other new, uh, new abilities that they're able to do. Um, this pulls a lot of other systems along with it. Um, now, in, in short, most companies moving, are moving from a desperate set of systems that are highly uh, disconnected. So they're, they're interconnected, but there's a lot, a lot of these systems, and they're looking to consolidate and integrate with, with a new strategy. So customers are looking for help and how to make this journey, and that's where you, you come in. Each customer has their own unique set of challenges. These are some that we, we have heard from customers, right? Uh, a lot have their own data centers, their aging hardware. Um, often these investments are three or five years, although, again, uh, these big ERP systems are not necessarily easy to move, and so often the hardware is actually end of life already. Um, so a customer is looking for the right opportunity to uh, move to the cloud um, or replatform, and this is where, again, you can, you can help customers. Um, these things are difficult to move, um, and oftentimes when they're not hosting them themselves, they're in a hosting, hosted facility, and these, these hosted contracts can be expensive uh, and rigid and inflexible. So just as you know, Amazon.com, we're applying very similar logic to AWS, right? Global scale, 44 uh, availability zones spread across 16 different regions today. Um, built, operated it uh, alike, no matter where you're actually deploying. Uh, all available through APIs. Uh, the, it's the agility and the flexibility of the platform that makes, makes some, some new things uh, available for us, even when we're looking at some of these older technologies like SAP. Um, we continue to invest in our platform specific to SAP, uh, and I'll, I'll share some of that with you in here in just a moment. And it builds kind of a future-proof way for customers to feel comfortable in moving these key workloads to the cloud without necessarily having to worry about what they do in the next you know, two, three, five years, if that makes sense. Um, I would say roughly 90 to 95 percent of our roadmap is driven by what customers are telling us matters to them, um, and so that's that's why we iterate so quickly. Overall, there are thousands of SAP customers running SAP solutions on AWS today. Uh, hundreds of these are enterprises. And uh, net new customers, if we look at just the period from 2014 so 2017 is, is actually increasing in a compounded 45% annual growth rate. So it's happening. It's happening, and many of our partners are actually helping customers make this transition now. And there's lots of names here you probably recognize. Customers like Bucks, Fairfax, GE Oil and Gas, BP. Um, I'll just walk through just a couple of the examples. So Coca-Cola, I to check, they're actually one of the largest bottlers uh, for Coca-Cola. Um, they were running ECC on DB2 in a hosted facility. Um, their contract actually came up well in advance, of, uh, or much quicker than they actually thought it was going to, um, and so they actually needed a, a place to move rather quickly. In less than two months, they were able to move their entire SAP landscape from SAP on DB2 to uh, SAP on AWS. Still leveraging DB2, but now hosted instead of on AIX, on Linux. Um, and in the, in the result, the end result was saving actually 50 to 60 percent in infrastructure costs. They're leveraging new capabilities for their SAP environment, like auto scaling. I mean, those of you who know SAP would probably shake your heads and say, well, "You can't auto scale SAP systems." They're actually using auto scaling uh, and actually improving their month-end processing times. Um, also, something that they they tout as a, a key benefit for actually moving to AWS is that they reduced the uh, the RPO for their disaster recovery environment to one day down for 15, uh, sorry, from one day down to 15 minutes, and from three days down to three hours for recovery time, right? So they can actually move, move much quicker when it comes to planning for disasters. We've got customers like Brooks Brothers, who actually started 
interestingly enough, as a cloud-first strategy with SAP workloads. It was a combination of a SAP car CRM solution, tightly integrated with their ERP, their, what they call their legacy ERP system on-premises. Hooked into this was uh, an application for cleansing data, as well as our call centers. Uh, so very, very hybrid in nature uh, and tightly integrated. Um, they're actually moving on to implementations of things like S4. Um, they're actually uh, here on site this week and be sharing their, their, their story themselves. Um, then there's BP. BP is a, is a $183 billion annual revenue company. Um, they run AWS with a SAP HANA Agile Data Mart. Like many customers do, they, they often look at kind of the OLAP scenarios. This led them to actually moving just recently their production ECC environment for their entire Castrol Lubes business. How many of you know Castrol? You've heard of that before. So that entire landscape is actually running on AWS now. And the result is it's actually running 40% faster on our platform. And this is actually leading them to move the entire rest of their estate to AWS over the next 18 months. It's, it's, it's happening. And this is why. I believe it's a combination of our platform, the history we have here with SAP, uh, the programs, which I'm going to talk a little bit about today, People and you are partners who are helping customers. If you take a look at where we started back in 2008 with SAP as a customer themselves, there's a long history here with actually figuring out how to make SAP systems work, and not just work, but really work well and shine in the cloud. Uh, if you look at the first systems we actually were working with them on and certifying, you look at things like rapid deployment solutions or business objects or some of the SMB solutions like All-in-One or Business One. And rightly so, these, these were not necessarily mission critical um, back in the day. And I'll be honest, I think the first system we actually certified, the, the first instance, was the M24 Extra Large or 2 Extra Large. How many of you remember that instance type way back in the day? It had, I think, roughly 60 gig of RAM. And there were a lot of, a lot of things that we learned. And so throughout this history, we've actually baked a lot of these learnings that customers have brought to us back into our platform uh, and now offer what we do today. And you can see as we actually got through most of the, the critical certifications, especially around NetWeaver workloads, your classic ERP systems, we actually turned our focus on actually building purpose-built equipment for SAP. How many of you heard of the, the X1 instance types with a bit of an insane amount of RAM, right? So those were actually, we, we chose to purposely build those for SAP. I'll get into that in just a moment. Most recently, uh, we have Hybris that's now supported by uh, you can actually run Hybris with Aurora, Aurora database, which I think is super interesting. Um, we've got uh, some things like HANA Express, HEC, SAP now running, uh, backed by AWS in, in GA. So SAP now also leaning in with us and, and working with, uh, with their solutions on our platform. And as Andy likes to say, there's just no compression algorithm for this, right? This history, uh, this, uh, this ability to actually take a lot of these learnings is, is super key. And so, we learned a lot from helping customers. Um, customers, as they change hardware platforms, database platforms, this is not an easy thing for them to do. But we want to make it super simple. Uh, well, a lot simpler than it is, right? Um, customers actually making this journey, they have a lot of questions. You know, what does is, what is all my custom code that I've developed in my SAP system over the years look like? Will it, st will it still work on HANA? Um, what actual sizing will I need? I can't tell you how many times we've had a customer come to us with a sizing report that's come from an, an existing SAP system just to find out once they're actually done with the, the migration, they need a lot less from a memory perspective. We get that a lot. And then I think the most, uh, most often the question customers have is, when do I actually make this journey? Do I have the right business case? Do I, uh, do I know what I need for my business right now or should I wait? Is there, is there a benefit to waiting? And so this is the, the rapid migration program we put together with SAP. It's called FAST. I did not choose the acronym. Uh, but it's a program that provides a set of processes, procedures, and tooling. It was developed in collaboration with SAP. And the idea is to help customers who are running these mission-critical SAP systems, ECC, BW, uh, and other business suite systems on any database, right? And we call any DB. You, think, you can think of that as SQL Server, DB2, Oracle and get that and lift that to AWS and transform it to HANA in a rapid amount of time. The goal of the program is really to provide uh, 
a lot of automation and remove as much heavy lifting as possible and get a customer an answer really quickly as to whether this is right for them. If you think about it, they can actually test what works for them uh, and then make the right choice for their business uh, without any hardware investment needed uh, to gain this experience and this insight. So let's break it down just a little bit here. We absolutely recognize this is not a simple exercise. Um, this this uh, initial fast migration is not a standalone exercise. And what I'm really talking about is a prove-it phase, where a customer can get answers really quickly. Um, once they have this answer, they can actually then take it to their, their business sponsor or their CIO and say, this is, these are some learnings. Yes, it makes sense for us. Or no, we should wait. Right? And that's, that's the key here, or the value for the customer. The other cool thing is that the tooling involved in the FAST program is actually the same as the actual production migration. So this is something that is repeatable uh, and reusable. The other interesting thing is once, once a customer actually has a copy of their system in AWS, we find that they are willing to do other things with it, right? Okay, now I have a copy of my ECC system. It's, it's now backed by HANA. and I can see what my month-end processing looks like or how fast uh, you know, my Z code actually runs. Um, but what does that next step like an upgrade to S4 HANA look like? And they're able to actually do that by taking a, a snapshot or a clone of that environment very quickly. So let's break the process down just a little bit, a little bit more. So we have the, the preparation phase, which is absolutely critical, and we've actually identified a whole uh, list of things that we ask customers to actually go through and work through, so that when we actually get to the, uh, the migration phase, we're not spending a lot of time uh, doing a lot of pre-work uh, that, that is often can be executed by the customer uh, in advance of, of you coming on site with them or, or whatnot. Um, there's also other things that are just good to get out of the way, right? Uh, for new customers, do they have, um, have they engaged with their own security teams already? Those are one of the first, uh, uh, one of the first conversations we want to have. Proper VPC set, set up and design. What kind of connectivity do we have in place? Uh, you as partners, um, will you have the access you need to the AWS console to help spin up some of these resources uh, and not have to be sitting there waiting for, for access? Uh, and so again, that's kind of the process. Then there's the actual execution phase. And we estimate the execution phase can be done depending on the, the database size and as little as two days. Now, the, the interesting thing with the SAP tooling, uh, which I'll get into here in a moment, is that it actually combines the extract of the source system with an upgrade if a customer wants to. So if they're like many customers who have put off uh, upgrade of their systems to the latest enhancement packs, this is something that can be actually bundled on the fly as well. So let's talk a little bit about some of the instances that we're actually using. I referenced X1 instances just a moment ago. It's super easy to actually spin up a four terabyte instance today. In less than a half hour, you can have a four, a, an instance with a whopping four terabytes of RAM ready uh, on, on the target side for an import of a, of a HANA database. Um, our, our platform, we, we have a number of different sizes. You can see X1 family, we support up to both one and two terabyte systems increments. R4 family supports up to half a terabyte. And then as I mentioned, X1E is our latest family that supports uh, four terabytes. We also support very massive scale out environment, right? So the customers who are actually uh, needing large scale out environments for analytic workloads or BW workloads, we can support up to 50 terabytes now in a 25 node cluster. Interestingly enough, uh, we uh, recently completed some benchmarks uh, for these, these very large uh, clusters. It took us just about a day to set up this 25 node benchmark environment. Now compare that to how long it would take to set up a 25 node, two terabyte set of hardware and all the planning and racking and stacking. In 2018, we're going to have larger instances coming. We've already announced we'll have systems of uh, between 8 and 16 terabytes of memory. We estimate 95% of the, the market out there that you'll be interacting with can actually make use of anything, you know, 4 terabytes and less. But we're also interested in, in, in helping customers in that last 5% as well. Let's talk a little bit about the tooling. So SAP released a new tool called SAP DMO for System Move. Uh, as I mentioned before, this can be used to both migrate and convert a source system to, from NEDB to a SAP on HANA or SAP on ASE. And we have some customers actually migrating to ASE and not just HANA. Um, 
it's a very powerful system that combines the conversion and the migration at the same time. The tool itself actually supports migrations of very old systems, dating all the way back to R345 B, I believe. So there's a caveat, right? The more enhancement packs you actually bundle in with this migration, the longer, obviously, the process is going to take. We estimate about a day is added per enhancement pack. Uh, the previous tool, called DMO, uh, actually required that the source and target system actually be in the same data center. So what allows us to move a little bit faster here is that SAP has worked with us to decouple the export and the import process. So let's talk a little bit about AWS Quick Starts. So there are a lot of AWS Quick Starts today. The idea with Quick Starts is to automate complex deployment topologies. We have some for SAP. We have some for other classic workloads like Microsoft Exchange, right? If you want to set up a very large distributed exchange cluster spread across availability zones, this, is, this can be done in a fully automated way. With FAST, we actually leverage the AWS Quick Starts for SAP, uh, SAP HANA. And basically, this, this allows a customer to deploy all the necessary AWS building blocks plus provision the SAP components, including HANA following all the recommendations for high availability, performance, reliability. It's all baked in. We have a new quick start called the SAP NetWeaver Quick Start. This actually automates the orchestration and installation of the application stack. Again, this is a, a quick start that is also free for use, right? This is something we, we make readily available to customers and partners like yourselves. Um, so within an hour, you can have a fully functioning HANA system, the full end-to-end -end SAP NetWeaver plus HANA installation through Quick Start actually takes about three hours. So it's, uh, it's not bad at all. So let's take a look, quick look at the high-level fast migration process here. First, obviously, we're worried a little bit about connectivity. Uh, we're hoping a customer has either established a VPN connection or Direct Connect. Depending on the database size, Direct Connect may be the best option. Uh, the next step is to actually deploy the SAP DMO server this is, uh, this is software that any SAP customer has readily available to them. It comes with their SAP licenses. This is not something you have to bring yourself. Um, and they can install this either on-premises in their own data center, if they have some spare capacity or hardware there, or they can actually deploy it on AWS. It doesn't matter where it's deployed. Uh, obviously, we work through the preparatory steps that I talked about just a moment ago. And then we actually deploy the target environment using AWS Quick Starts. And a lot of this can actually be done in parallel steps, the export process, if that makes sense. Obviously, we're, we're converting uh, data as it's exported out of the, the source system. And we're actually putting that into AWS. Now, most partners and customers use S3 as an intermediate step, um, since it's able to parallelize uploads into S3. Um, and that's super easy to get those files then to the target. Uh, AWS environment. Uh, from a transport perspective, um, we recommend that if, you know, if, if you're using something like a T3, um, use a snowball as your, as your transport mechanism uh, if your data files are more than two terabytes or, or more. Um, if you're looking at 100 megabits per second link, uh, then use something. Um, you can support up to about a five terabyte database um, from a transfer perspective then obviously there's some validation that occurs on the target side. Let's talk about some uh, examples here. So Zappos is a subsidiary of Amazon. They were uh, one of our first customers to actually uh, prove this out for us. They'd already decided to move their systems to AWS. So this exercise for them was actually more of a validation for them. They got an early look at what their ETC system would look like on HANA. Now they had a fairly clean system. Uh, so a lot of those prep steps actually went super smooth. And after a couple of iterations, we're actually able to help them get their source environment down uh, over to AWS in about a 29-hour uh, time period. Now, the source system is roughly, as I, as I uh, mentioned here, is about a 2.7 terabyte uh, Oracle database. Our estimation is that this is about uh, very similar to 90% of the customers out there. So it can be done in a relatively quick amount of time. Here's another more recent example. Just about three weeks ago, we completed a, a large-scale exercise with a major consumer goods company. 25 terabyte source 
uh, Oracle BW environment, uh, migrated to AWS in just over 40 hours, 48 hour, uh, 42 hours. Now, the interesting thing here is right, uh, the target environment was a five node X1 cluster, two terabyte, uh, two terabyte nodes. We spun this uh, cluster up in less than an hour, fully validated, supported by SAP. And the, the best result is that they saw up to four, four performance improvement. The other interesting thing was, remember how I mentioned earlier how the sizing uh, is often just a bit off, right? So often the sizing reports customers see that are projected uh, when they're actually planning migration are often padded. I don't think this is a surprise. So this customer actually saw that they only needed about eight terabytes. It was actually less than eight terabytes. So they were actually able to remove one of these nodes from the cluster after a rebalance and save money there. So it's a combination of prescriptive processes, obviously tooling, combination of the SAP tooling, which is again available to any SAP customer out there, use of quick starts, and a team of AWS uh, people and partners like you. And that's where, that's where you really fit in. And here's why I asked the question at the beginning, right? So some of our partners are AWS infrastructure partners, right? They offer managed services, uh, while the customer takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting that comes into uh, operating and running these SAP environments. Some of our partners uh, have SAP hosting experience, but they don't have AWS hosting experience, if that makes sense. Um, and some partners are actually doing it all, and there's opportunities for all types of engagements here, uh, depending on the, on the type of partner you are. We have some SAP uh, partners. They don't want to do AWS infrastructure hosting. So for those of you that do AWS infrastructure managed services, it's a great way for you to integrate with a lot of the SAP partners in the ecosystem to help customers make this journey. Let's talk a little bit about how we, uh, as an AWS organization, are ramping up to help partners in this endeavor. So we continue to expand globally. Obviously, with programs like FAST, we're, we're, we're working to invest in making this an easier uh, proposition for customers to get answers early, to understand if it's right for their business. Uh, our internal team over the last few years has expanded very rapidly to be able to support uh, not just customer adoption, but also partner development. And so hopefully you've seen that um, even in the SAP space, we've been bringing on additional development managers to support uh, your development. And while we have a, a, a team of professional services folks, it's a very small team, and our choice is to actually embed them in with a partner and go in and serve a customer, because that's the only way we really can re really scale. Uh, there's continued expansion this coming year uh, in AWS, including in the SAP team. And uh, we're excited to, s to see how we can collaborate with you, our partners. So reInvent's all about education, right? Um, so talking about talent, and your, your talent actually makes sense here. We're here to help train your staff. We prefer a train-to-trainer approach, but we have recently started a boot camp series around this program. Uh, and specifically SAP on AWS. And many of you may have already attended this. And our hope is that uh, you will join us for one of these days and that you will take, you will identify someone and bring them and allow us to help train them. And then they can go back and train your organizations on, on this fast migration approach. We have competency programs, including one for SAP. How many of you are SAP competency partners? How many of you are thinking you really, really want to be an SAP competency partner now? So competencies allow customers to amplify their unique business capabilities to customers really looking for this, this expertise. So customers can go to our partner finder and say, who's got SAP expertise? And they'll get a list of partners who, who hold the SAP competency. There's other benefits, uh, program funding, um, selective eligibility to receive customer opportunities, uh, things of that nature. We have a lot of customers who want to execute this program, and we need partners to help us scale it. Uh, because we're built to scale, we do a lot of online training as well. Uh, we're working on, and we'll really soon, uh, an SAP online boot camp as well uh, that you can take as kind of the first step into training your, your, your departments and your employees. Real quickly, before I, before I close, hopefully you can see that there are a lot of, a lot of customer opportunities out there. Uh, there's a, uh, an opportunity for you as partners 
to help customers with these, these opportunities. Um, the idea is, again, we want to help customers quickly identify the cost, this effort, and see if a business case exists. We talk a lot about failing fast, right? There's not a lot of outlay for a customer to go through a project like this, especially from an infrastructure perspective, and then make a decision and say, you know, that's not right for me. We hope it's right for them, obviously. Um, but this is, this is something that if they were to try to do this uh, on-premises, is, is a much lengthier exercise. And, require, and typically requires uh, a lot more approval from, um, from business uh, decision makers. Um, hopefully you can see that it, it actually can be done. Uh, there, are, there are case studies. There are people that have actually gone through this. Um, and customers can move really, really quickly. So we need partners like you to help us help customers transform and move their systems to AWS. And we have a number of uh, additional resources, case studies, white papers, uh, notes. There's fast program information that's available on our microsite and some additional sessions in uh, the Global Partner Summit as well that I encourage you to, uh, to take a look at. There's one specifically around designing HA solutions uh, for HANA, AWS, uh, as well as uh, more of the business aspects of helping customers um, make, this, make this case. So with that, uh, again, welcome to reInvent uh, Global Partner Summit. Uh, we're super excited to have you here and hope you have a, a wonderful experience. Thank you.